Number two. So, um, so now they're giving us um, a, really a pretty complex function. We're getting pretty advanced in our ability to deal with functions. This, this section is all about rational function. What does it mean, rational ratio? One function over another. How do you deal with a function that's made out of two other functions divided? We call that a rational. Like it's a ratio. It's, it's a fraction function. One function over another. So what do we do? Well, first off, they want the y-intercept, then the x-intercepts, and the vertical asymptotes, and the horizontal asymptotes. A lot. They want a lot on this one. So how do you find y-intercepts? Well, we had that a long time ago in the course. That's actually pretty easy. To find a y-intercept, you set x equal to 0. Remember, for intercepts, you always set the opposite letter to 0. Like down here for the x-intercepts, I'm going to set y to 0. Remember, for in those, that's back in the exam two notes, I think, or maybe the exam one notes. I don't know. It was a while ago. And I said, remember this, it's going to keep coming up all semester. Intercepts, they always ask us for intercepts. How do you find intercepts? You set the opposite letter to zero. So if you want a y intercept, you make x zero. If you want an x intercept, you make y zero. Why? Because that's what it means. If a graph like hits the x axis here, think about, think about that point. That point is over, whoop, no, it's not. Let me try again. It hits the x axis here. That point is over some number. I don't know, like maybe seven, comma zero. The y value's got to be zero at an x-intercept, right? If you're on the x-axis, your y height is zero. And if you're over here on the y-axis, that means you're over zero up three or whatever. Your x value is zero if you're on the y-axis, huh? So that's just what it means. To be on the x-axis, like right here, then your y is zero. To be on the x-axis, the y-axis, then you're, you got it. I'm, I'm messing it up. So the opposite letter is zero. So we take the equation then, and we just say, oh, okay. You want me to make x, if you want the y-intercept, I'm going to make x zero. So put in zero here, 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 and here. And this, by the way, is y, right? Function values are y values. So what do you get? y equals just minus 5 over 20, right? These guys are all gone when you plug in zero, which is what? Minus 1 fourth. So then that's zero comma minus one fourth. Remember, you got to give the, the x and the y. We started with x zero and we got the y value minus one fourth. I just, I just divided it top and bottom by five to get minus one fourth. But they want a point, which means they want the x and the y both. So x zero comma y minus one fourth with parentheses around it. Now let's find the x-intercept. That's going to be a little harder. So um, let's do that. So how am I going to find the x-intercept? OK, yeah, I'll do it. So coming on down. So we have, I'll write it down here for us, y equals 2x squared minus 3x minus 5 over three x squared minus 19 x plus 20. Okay. And um, as I told you, so you have to make y zero. So the y will become zero. So in fact, I'll, I'll just put a zero here. So I don't have to rewrite the whole thing. That's just zero. Now, how do you solve that? How do you solve that? Well, you can just put it over one, right? Any whole number can go over one, then you cross multiply. So we get zero times and one times, oops, too fast there. Three X squared minus 19 X plus 20 and one times two X squared minus three X minus five. And zero times anything, which is zero, right? Zero times anything is zero. And one times anything is just itself. Right? One times these guys is just itself. See what happened there? You're tracking with me so far. To find an x-intercept, you make y zero. So when I put y zero here in the equation, the original equation, this, this equation right here, I just brought it down. I made y zero, put that over one, cross multiply. This is gone. So it's just it's just to here. Well, how do you solve that quad? Or you could factor if you're a super good factorer. Most people prefer the quad. So this is a 
B, C. So negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So it's going to be negative plus or minus the square root. Oh, I'm running out of room here a little bit. B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Let's put in the stuff. Uh, this is negative 3. This is negative 3. 4AC, this is negative 5 all over 2A. There we go. A little squished together. So what, what do we got here? We've got positive 3, don't we? Because it's a double negative. Plus or minus the square root of 9. 3 squared is 9. I'm going to change colors here. Um, what's negative? Oh, come on, I want to change. There we go. Negative, positive, negative. It's going to be positive. See how we have two negatives here? One, two negatives. Two negatives, positive. So it's going to be 40. Multiply that out. Over 4, which is 3 plus or minus square root of 49 over 4, which is 3 plus or minus 7 over 4. We good there? So that's 3 plus 7 over 4, or 3 minus 7 over 4, which is 10 over 4. Divide top and bottom by 2. 5 halves, or what's this one? Minus 4 over 4, which is minus 1. 5 halves or minus 1. That's a lot of work. 5 halves or minus 1. What are, what are those? I forgot what we were even doing almost. Those are the x-intercepts. So 5 halves comma 0 and minus 1 comma 0 with a comma in between. You see that? We, we, we made y0. So, so that's an x with a y0, an x with a y0. Right? You with me? We started by setting y to 0. y became 0. So whatever comes of x, it goes with a y0. We started with plugging in y0 right here. And then when we did the work on the quad, we got the answer 5 halves and negative 1. That's x equals 5 halves and x equals negative 1. So there's the two x-intercept points. Now we need to go on to the vertical asymptotes. How do we find vertical asymptotes? Well, I put that for you in uh, the notes. Let's go down here and look at the notes. Somewhere, here it is. Here's the exam three notes. This is the exam three notes, which is the top of the unit three module, finding vertical asymptotes. So what do you do? You take the denominator equal to zero and solve it. Ignore the numerator. If the denominator is an x squared equation, you got to use the quadratic formula. That's how you find the vertical asymptotes. I'll give reasons why later. Well, let me at least say the, the bottom, if the bottom is zero, dividing by zero is infinity, which makes the graph go straight up or straight down. That's a ver you know, vertical asymptote. So that's why we say denominator zero. Because if you ever divide by zero, remember that's infinity. Because zero goes into one or any other number an infinite amount of times. Dividing means bottom into top. And if the bottom is zero, right? This is a fraction, right? It's a fraction. So if the bottom is zero, zero on the bottom means infinity because bottom into top, zero into anything, infinite amount of times. Or if it's negative, it would be negative infinity. That's why the graphs go up to positive infinity or down to negative infinity at a vertical asymptote where the denominator is zero. Has nothing to do with the numerator, but we ignore the numerator. Has everything to do with the denominator being zero. So that's how you find vertical asymptotes. So let's do it. We're right here. We got to find the vertical asymptotes. So I'm going to do that. So, so what? Well, with my function, that big old function there. So let me bring it down here. So I'm on vertical asymptotes, and the function is y equals, I don't remember now, 2x squared minus 3x minus 5 over, of course, the numerator doesn't even matter, 3x squared minus 19x plus 20. 
was it was a plus 20? Yeah, plus 20. Okay, so what do you do? You grab the denominator equal to, you don't even care about the numerator at all. Just denominator, let me back that up a little bit. So you don't even care about this at all, just denominator equals zero, which means quadratic formula. A, B, C, here we go yet again. Our friend, the quadratic formula. Negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over 2x. So that's negative parenthesis plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Put in the stuff a, oh no, b, which is minus 19, minus a 4ac is 20 all over 2a. There we go. So we're trying to find the vertical asymptotes, denominator zero. That's what makes a vertical asymptote denominator zero. What do we get? Uh, well, double negative, no. Plus 19, yeah, 19, plus or minus the square root. 19 squared, use your calculator right here. 19 squared, at least that's from the one I have. Never mind. Three, oh, not three to one, I was guessing 361. Minus four times three times 20 is 12 times 20, 240. Over six. Um, I'm getting 21 over six. And that's 19 plus minus 11. If you square root 121, it's 11. So what do we get? 19 plus 11 over six or 19 minus 11. We do the two options, right? So that's a 30 over six, which is five or eight over six divided top and bottom by two. So it's five or four thirds. So there we go, we found and that's, that's x equals 5 and x equals 4 thirds. Those are the vertical asymptotes. 5, so they just want you to write 5, because they already have the x equals right there. So just 5 comma 4 thirds, either order. You can put them in either order. Those are the two vertical asymptotes of this graph, where the graph rises and falls, goes up to infinity, down to eight infinity. Finally, it's a lot of work here, horizontal asymptotes. So let's grab the function and do the horizontal asymptote. How do we do it? Let me grab the function again. 2x squared minus 3x minus 5. Let's squared minus 3x minus 5 over 3x squared minus 19x plus 20 plus plus 20 plus 20. yeah all right what do you do well go down to the notes again horizontal asymptotes right here horizontal asymptotes. it's all about the numerator power and the denominator power it's the numerator and denominator power which determines horizontal asymptotes. If they're equal, if numerator is greater than denominator is greater, okay. So let's, let's figure that out. So what do we have here? The numerator power is two. The denominator powers are the same. They're the same. So what does that mean? Well, if they're equal, they tie, the horizontal asymptote is y equals a over b, where a and b are the numbers in front of the highest power terms, top and bottom. Oh, so it's, y equals a over b. Where a and b? This and this. This is a, this is b. The numbers in front of the highest power terms. Two thirds. So y equals two thirds. That's the horizontal asymptote. That's the flat line height the graph reaches. So that's y, there you have the y equals two thirds. There we go look at that so that's 
that's a lot of different stuff we found. You could graph that on GeoGebra and you would find out those various facts that we just found. <laughs>